Let's talk about the temporary tables that you're using. Derived tables, volatile tables, global temporary tables. And let's think about how we might join those together. But let's first take a look at this. This is a simple volatile table and we create the volatile table. It will stick around until you log off. To materialize the table, we will do an insert select from another table into our volatile table and then we can query it all day long until we log off. That's the fundamentals of a volatile table. Now I got a great technique for you. Sometimes you're creating a volatile table that you are going to join to another table. So keeping with our order table customer table theory, we're going to create a volatile table on the order table and we're going to give it a primary index. Yes, you can give the volatile table a primary index too. Don't let it default to the first column. Give it a primary index and I gave it customer number. I then populate it with the information I need from the order table and when I join it to the customer table on customer number equals customer number, they both have the same primary index of customer number and this is going to be much faster. I'm going to do the same thing now with a global temporary table. Let's talk about a global temporary table. First of all, you need temp space to populate a global temporary table. A global temporary table is very unique. You create it one time and then you populate it with an insert select. Insert into my table, select everything from this table and then you can query it all day long until you log off. But when you log off, the date is removed, but the table structure stays permanently. Knowing this, it's fantastic for when you're doing low jobs, ETL jobs. You know that table's out there and you know it's always empty and you know it's not using your spool space to materialize it like a volatile table would. It's using your temp space to populate it and then your spool space to query it. So it will save you space and it's always out there. That's how a global temporary table is designed to work but there's one other caveat. Once you create the global temporary table, if you give people permission, 2,000 people can do an insert select on that table simultaneously and they all have their own instance of the table. Nobody ever shares the data. Each person that runs the insert select gets their own personalized version of that table that they can query. Nobody else can even see that information because it's tied to the session that they're in. I've got two great techniques for your global temporary tables. Take a look here. First of all, you'll notice that I've given this global temporary table a primary index. Do that every time. Otherwise, it will default to the first column in the table and make it a non-unique primary index. So I've taken care of that with my primary index statement here. The second thing I can do is I can use the word compress on any of the columns except for the primary index and I wouldn't want to do it on any column that already says not null because what will happen here if there's any null values in the column that says compress it'll compress it and it'll save you all of that space. Once again I've joined these two tables on customer number and customer number custno and so since they both have the primary index of Cusno, because I was thinking ahead, this join could save hours. And that's the beauty of understanding what you're doing behind the scenes. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Do you need a query tool that has a join builder or can analyze data without clogging up a system? How about cross-system capabilities? and the ability to compress data saving a company millions, well, then the Nexus is the query tool for you, the Nexus. Let's query the future. Visit coughingdw.com for more information.